This show has a video page. Does anyone really care about your commentary on it? Nope. <laughs> I know I'm a little late to this, but I really thought that everyone would agree with me with what I thought about this season, the ultimatum queer love. Uh, and then reviews started coming out on YouTube and I'm like, nope, no one has said the things that I am thinking and that I thought. So it turns out that my opinions about this cast this year might be a little unpopular. So I gotta freaking say them. I need y'all to tell me what you think about this. I don't know if y'all watch it. I don't know if that's y'all's thing. I'm not like the biggest. I'm not a huge reality TV person, but I freaking love those shows. I, I love the ultimatum. There's only two seasons. There was the straight version and then the queer version, which I'm so happy about. And I'm just so intrigued by the show because the premise of it is nauseating. When I first heard about like the whole idea of the ultimatum, I was like, that sounds like the worst emotional pain that I could ever be put through ever in my life. I would never go on that show. That sounds like the, the worst scenario ever. I would never willingly let my partner go be with someone else to then be like, see, don't you want me? Aren't I fucking great? So for those who don't know what the ultimatum is, basically couples, one person is given the other one an ultimatum that's like married me or we break up. Then what happens is they break up and they start dating everyone else that's on the show. And then they pick which one of the new people they want to go and pretend to be married to for three weeks. And then after those three weeks, they go back with their other partner and go and pretend to be married to them for three weeks. And then at the end, they figure out if you want to get married or not. I mean, pfft. That sounds like hell. I would not want to do that at all. People on this show, like some of them are for real, for real, that they think that this is like the best thing for them. They think that this is going to help their relationship so much. They're like, I'm so thankful we went on the ultimatum because we learned so much. So great for us. Awful. So the people that go on the ultimatum in a grander sense, everyone who goes on this needs to break up. If, if you are at the point where you're like, you need to marry me or go, that's, that should be an easy answer. The person should be like, yep, I will marry you or no, I don't, I won't marry you. And then you should break up. Secondly, anyone who's coming on the show, bringing their partner onto the show knows that the purpose of this show is for their partner to be with someone else and pretend to be married to them for three weeks and then come back together with you for three weeks. In the end of this, they think that they are going to make their partner want to propose to them and marry them. What? Barbara, so the people that are issuing this ultimatum have some have some problems. They are like 100% into the marriage. That's awesome that they want to get married so bad more than they love the person that they're with. They, they want to get married. And they think that the reason why their partner is not marrying them is because they don't know how amazing I am. They don't know what they've got. So they've got to go have their little hall pass and date Brianna over there. So then he knows how amazing I am because Brianna is dog shit. Okay, I'm editing, but another thing that I wanted to say that I didn't say for some reason, they also want to make their partner jealous by having them be with other people too. By being like, look at me being single with other people who could marry me, who are like really awesome. You should marry me before someone else does and snatch me up. Either way, both of these mentalities are not not good, Brenda. I'm not kidding you. It's said best by some of the very cast what their motives are. One of the cast this year says that this whole gig is to make our partners want to be with us. All of y'all need to break up and go to therapy. This anxious attachment style that all of y'all are exhibiting right now is not attractive. This make my partner want me mentality is not what love is. It's not healthy love. And here we go. We got this season. I was so pumped because when I first saw the regular ultimate them, I'm like, this would be so much more entertaining and interesting if they were all gay, if they could all date each other. The tea, the drama. And then this year they're like, how about we just make them all lesbians? Fucking, I'm in, I'm watching, I will be watching. Everyone's talking about Mildred, Yoli, Vanessa. Who's not talking about Vanessa, right? Let's take a minute and talk about Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. Thank you so much to Skillshare. You guys have heard me talk about Skillshare probably a million trillion times by now. You already know that Skillshare offers thousands of amazing, inspiring creators of classes online, but did you know that they also offer hundreds of career focused classes as well. Skillshare can help you find new career possibilities that go in line with your creative learning journey. I love to learn. Learning's like my gig, especially anything to do with my business. Cause I run my own kind of business. I do this 
alone. And I like to learn about anything that makes me productive and focused and helpful. There is no better time or place to not have a traditional job. Whether that is building on the skills that you already acquire or you want to learn a whole other new skill, Skillshare's got classes for you. If you take photos and you're thinking about, I'm thinking about doing photography for a living, check out how to turn your photography hobby into a career by Alan Lavery and learn more about your image, finding work, investing, your portfolio, and lots more. You want to learn more about marketing and managing TikToks? Check out Mastering TikTok. Stop scrolling and post your first TikTok by Taylor Lauren, which explains how TikTok works, how you can make them, how you can edit them, and lots more. The important thing is the first 1,000 of my viewers who go and click the link down below in the description are going to get to be able to try out Skillshare and have a one month free trial. Be sure you go click the link down below and get started on your creative learning journey today. Shout out to Skillshare for being so cool. Thank you. Back to the video, Bob. There's others that I need to talk about and for particular reasons. As this is, you know, I'm autistic and I talk about autism and stuff primarily. I have some autism and stuff to talk about. <laughs> but I also just have like other social opinions from an autistic person's perspective that I just want to share about some of some of these cast of characters. Everyone on this show on Netflix, they were all using she, her pronouns, which I was like, I honestly, when I was watching it, I'm like, mm. Ozzy was talking specifically a lot about gender identity and expression and like continuous thoughts thoughts about being a boy and I'm like is Ozzy really out here change like using the name Ozzy don't think that was their birth name because they're from Australia <laughs> and talking about being a boy and a man uh and using she her pronouns so anyway I did go and I was looking on all of the cast's Instagrams to try to find their pronouns just to confirm because also on a lot of videos people were using they them pronouns for a lot of the cast that I'm like are you just doing that because they're androgynous let's not assume I'm gonna go look and not all of the cast members had their pronouns of it Available, including Ozzy did not have their pronouns. Sam did not have their pronouns. Everyone else I could find uses she, her pronouns. Xander uses she, her, also they. Tiff goes by they, them, theirs. So I 1000% know that Tiff was misgendered the entire time. And that's doofy. <laughs> that's doofy. So we will be, you know, those, there you go. There's your uh, pronoun context. So episode one, uh, this episode starts, you meet all the couples, whatever. First of all, the host comes out and she, you know, Amy, Amy Adams looking gal. She's cute. Oh, I'm Joanna. They go, are you queer? She goes, no immediately dead <laughs> hang her crucify her why did they do that why couldn't they just get one one slightly gay person to host they had to get straighty magoo over here i'm not queer at all okay barbara imagine they're if they all walked away they're all like that's enough can i host the next one our first couple that we meet mm, mm, xander and vanessa zan and van we meet these two first i think primarily because vanessa starts talking first and doesn't stop so naturally they're like we have to introduce this bitch immediately bing 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 alarm bells are going off i think everyone's alarm bells were going off in general when they saw and heard vanessa and for the entire time i think a lot of people were like vanessa is a lot i had alarm bells going off for vanessa and xander let me explain something weird happens in my body and mind i don't know what it is but i i get this weird i know when someone is faking i know when someone is lying i know when someone is acting i know when someone is not being truthful i know when their thoughts are on something else something that like not what they're saying i've always been able to tell there's little slight like micro movements that i can pick up on that i'm like oh now here's the thing though i get this i get this weird like you're faking it with a few different groups of people because a few different groups of people fake it sometimes that person is autistic sometimes that person is a narcissist and sometimes that person is just a heavily traumatized masking individual my problem is that i can't tell what it is first of all <laughs> I, I don't think many people can and i have to get to know the person a little bit unfortunately i'm not a superhero but i got it with vanessa and with xander xander i don't think is faking it vanessa is faking it vanessa is being fake she's being fake she's acting she's lying what's that about immediately because i i looked at van and xan's relationship together and as i introduced the couple getting to know the two of them i was like both of these people are neurodivergent immediately i actually was like both of you seem autistic let's keep going first impressions I was like, autism, let's keep going. We meet Yoli and Mal. Roly poly Yoli, Miss Yo-Yo and Mal. Mal can marry me, 
right this moment. Mal the Virgo. I love Mal. I'm actually uh, clinically obsessed with multiple of the cast members on this show. However, Mal, you cannot be that emotionally healthy if you are in fact on the show and are in fact dating Yoli. Yoli, I was getting the red flags from, from the bat, but not like red flags like she sucks, like she's awful and vindictive. Red flags is in like she is a very emotional person and she seems like she loves everybody. But I was like, I like her. I really like Yoli's facial expressions. I like her tattoos. I like the way she conducts herself. I think she's a very respectful person. Like I think she speaks well. I love how Mal speaks. I love how Mal thinks. I love how Mal talks and walks and dresses. Yeah, anyway, Vanessa also likes Mal. Vanessa's also at her own table with her own girlfriend and is like, hey, hope to see you later, Mal. While like we're introducing the characters. Vanessa, it's not your turn, honey, to talk. And you know, then everyone's like, who the fuck is this bitch Just talking out loud doing stuff? And I was like, yes, if she dramatic and, and maybe being here for attention and acting, etc. But maybe she's autistic. Maybe she doesn't understand social rules that well. Oof. The thing is, so Vanessa's 30 and just by these two interactions and I'm having all these thoughts about her, they, I think that a lot of them base from, I think that was what I was like when I was in grade seven. I think that's what I was like when I was 12. The way that girls talked about Vanessa were a lot of the same ways that girls talked about me in middle school. And a lot of girls didn't like me in school, even when I didn't talk to them or do anything or say anything to them. But they were like, we just don't get along. We just don't get along. I'm like, why? I think because I was Vanessa, I was loud and obnoxious and I did, I don't know social rules and I spoke what I shouldn't have and I'm an actor and I also like people. I related heavily to Vanessa when I was 12, mind you, and she's 30 and I'm, I'm 22 and I'm like, I don't act like that now. I mean, there are still times where I'm a, I speak at a turn and stuff, but I think I think that I'm funny and that I'm relatable and that I'm respectful and I think that it's okay. I don't think I, I don't think I'm very much like Vanessa at all, but I was I was getting these hints. We keep going. Then we meet Lexi and Ray, which again, Lexi, Lexi, you Capricorn. <sighs> Ah, love Lexi so much. Oh, wow. I love Lexi also so much. I liked Lexi before she put on a bathing suit. First thoughts, Lexi knows who she is and what she wants and she's a, a powerful, strong Capricorn woman. Love. Ray is not a person. Ray doesn't have a personality yet. And I knew that later on, Ray was going to be having an identity crisis. I'm like, you don't know who you are. You are getting fully bulldozed by this woman who you love. Lexi, like, loves Lexi. Ray and Lexi love, right? But Ray is clearly the emotionally submissive one. I am not I don't know about their sex life. Ray doesn't have a lot of opinions about herself, about life, about a future. She has like no plan, no vision, no goal, no idea of who she is or what she wants. Lexi has a very strong sense of who she is and what she wants. And that's why she's like, I would like to marry you. I have wanted to marry you for a while. Can we get married? And Ray's like, I can't even spell marriage because I don't even know what my last name is. Then we meet Mildred and Tiff. Mildred and Tiff are your classic toxic sex couple. You know, talking to them, they've only been together for a year and a half. And Mildred's like, put a ring on her right now, Tiff. They're just like, we find all the time and then we fuck and we have crazy sex right cool we all know a couple like that we've we've all been a couple like that i'm sure um they need to break up also because both of them need to date me and now we meet sam and ozzy sam and ozzy have also only been together for like a year and a half but the cool thing about this cast is that at least they're older minus lexi lexi's 24 um she's vibing but the straight ultimatum there was not one person they're older than 25 i don't think and not one couple that was dating more than two and a half years woo at least here in the queer version ozzy's 42 cool vanessa's 30 mal is 34 they're all in their 30s-ish vibe. So at least they're older and like ready to get married. I think it's also different in like the lesbian community. There aren't a lot of, there are only so many lesbians. <laughs> Sam and Ozzy are like, it was love at first sight. There were butterflies and rainbows and balloons when we met each other. Anyone who says that and really relishes in that, that's not love. That's lust. You lusted after each other for first sight. There is no love at first sight. Ozzy was really like, it was so magical. Magic, magic. The first moment we met, magic. Magic. Red flag. Didn't like that. I'm getting the tingly feeling with Ozzy. Ozzy's faking. Ozzy's being something. At first, I'm like, Ozzy's autistic. I'm, I clocked Ozzy for potentially being autistic. I'm like, I cannot wait. There are so many people that might be autistic on this cast. I cannot wait. So here we meet, you know, all the couples. They spend their last night together, then they break up because then they're gonna go date everybody else. Tiff and Mildred have sex. I'm gonna miss your ass so much, babe. Xander gets sad while Vanessa is like pumped up and cannot wait to fuck women. Vanessa's like, this is gonna be awesome. I can't wait for you to have sex with women, Dave. And I cannot wait for me to have sex with women. Vanessa has not been with a person who has asked her to have one original thought or idea or opinion or personality trait. She has not been with a person who's asked anything of her and Xander deserves better. Sam and Ozzy, Ozzy, like they, they hug, I'm gonna miss you. And Ozzy goes, and whatever happens, no attachment to the outcome. 
what what did you say red flag i was getting the tinglys about ozzy and then ozzy said that and i was like why'd you say that that's manipulative that's the whole purpose of an ultimatum that is the whole purpose of the show is that you commit to the outcome stop being manipulative so i had my eye on ozzy i was like let's go let's see this sam ozzy's partner very shy very quiet and as we will come to learn <laughs> more we will come to learn more about sam and their dynamic you learn a lot about a person i think by the dynamic that they, they work with other people and multiple different people really tap into their brain they start dating each other oh my god i wish i was there wow i love this show so much vanessa literally knows nothing about herself when she's going around meeting people and talking to people which she's like everyone loves me i'm so bubbly everyone loves me i don't know what it is my past boyfriends have never even asked anything for me they just love me and give me everything i don't even have to do a thing i everyone's gonna love me and so vanessa is going around and she's talking to everybody and you see all these scenes and whatever the other person says vanessa's like yes me too i'm the exact same way that is my biggest thing people will be like so vanessa tell me about you and she's like how about you tell me about me how about you tell me three things that make me a catch and i'll tell you three things that make you a catch lexi's like i don't know you how can i say that and she's like Haha, that's right um your boobs are huge that's the first thing for you second red flag vanessa for not knowing anything about yourself what in the autism are you doing that that's that was me when i was 12 that was me when i was 12 not 30 she is just a mirror for whoever's in front of her that's why everyone likes you vanessa because you just mirror off of them and do whatever they're doing ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. After everyone's dated each other for a little bit, they all have like a party hangout, all 10 of them. And Vanessa is just there for puss, right? Vanessa's like, I'm ready to get fucked. She's there having a good time. She's like, I wish that we all were just in a polyamorous orgy right now. And everyone's like, oh, we don't because we are all here trying to get married. That's the point. I fucking love Yoli during this reaction because Vanessa's just being out of fucking pocket. Vanessa's like, so who wants to share who their number one is? Vanessa, this isn't a dating show. No. And Vanessa's like, okay, Yoli, do you want to talk about your number one? Yoli's like, no. Why are you, why are you yelling at me right now? I don't, what the fuck? Which was a, it was a projection. Vanessa wanted Yoli to talk about hers because Vanessa was like, my number one is Mal who Yoli's with. And one who Vanessa says that to, her girlfriend Xander. She's like, I'm really excited for my new relationship with Mal, Xander. And also you and Mal should become friends and then we can just have threesomes all the time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yoli gets a little pissed and she's like, if Vanessa wasn't here, yeah, I date everybody at this table. <laughs> and Vanessa's like, where did that come from? Girl, you don't know how to read the room at all. Funky. Can't wait to meet Vanessa's family members. I wonder if we will meet any of the family because that will help determine her status. Lexi and Vanessa are vibing for a bit. Lexi's like, oh my god, I really do like you. That's really weird. And then they go on like one final date where Vanessa lets her mask slip, where Vanessa stops mirroring Lexi for a little bit and starts um saying vapid shit that gets her in trouble. Lexi is is a person on the show who sincerely believes in the power of the show. She's like, I am here for the good best reason. The only reason anyone should be here. I'm being serious. This is serious. Uh, serious, serious, serious. Which I'm like, okay, I guess if you're on this show, that is the best mentality to have. But that's also fucked up because you. Sh this is not an okay situation that you should do. You shouldn't do that. You should not be doing that. Vanessa is taking this about as seriously as I would take it. She's like, like, she's here. She's like, Xander wants me to break up with her and, and go date someone else for three weeks. Alrighty. Guess I'm, guess that's going to happen. I'm going to date someone else for three weeks and then go right back to Xander and it's going to be fine. And Lexi's like, well, hopefully the plan is you're going to date someone for three weeks who then makes you want to get married to Xander. And Vanessa's like, that's not going to happen. And Lexi's like, but then why are you here? Do you think that though there's a chance that Xander could fall in love here? Do you think that there's a chance that Xander could find someone that would be better for them than you? And Vanessa's like, nope, I'm beautiful. Which I'm not gonna lie. I was like, this seems like poor. I feel like that was edited. I don't know if that was exactly said at that moment. It seemed very choppy when it happened. And so I took it with a grain of salt because it seemed like it was cut in and out. But basically Lexi kind of realized, Vanessa, you're literally just here for a hall pass for fun. You have no intentions of wanting to marry Xander and you don't think that Xander would ever be with anyone else besides you. What are you doing here then? You're not gonna help anyone get to the point that they want to be at the end of this. Fuck you. 
and Vanessa's like, what just happened? How did that, how did we get there? I'm so confused, which I thought was so funny. Yes, you're confused because, oh my God, you were mirroring somebody else and you don't understand her real true feelings about this. <laughs> so everyone's getting, getting closer to choosing their new person, their new partner for the next three weeks, their little fake trial wife. So you think about it, in a couple, one person really wants to get married. They are 100% in. They're like, I want to marry you so bad. So much so that I'm going to bring you to this, this show where I'm going to let you date other people for three weeks and then come back to me. So that person for the first three weeks is probably like hating their life and terrified and hoping everything's going to be fine. And then after the three weeks, they're like, please, please, please see. I'm awesome. Love me. Love me. Marry me. And the other partner is like, I don't want this. Come on. Usually. Sometimes the odd one, like um Madeline and the last one, and then Vanessa. Sometimes they're like, I can't wait to, to bone. But usually they're like, I love you. Uh, and like, I'd marry you at some point, but not right now, if that's cool. But then they got to go on to the show and they're like, hey, I guess my, my partner wants me to date other people. Guess I will. And then when they do, their partner gets mad. What do you want me to do? You're right on the show where I'm supposed to date other people. It's just fucked. It's just a lot of manipulation. I don't think ultimatums are bad per se, because I think that you deserve to have your boundary. And if that's what it is for you, that's what it is for you. As long as they are for real and you follow through with them and they're not just used as manipulation, as long as you commit to the outcome, Ozzy, or else you're just manipulating or else you're just saying words to try to get the person to do something that you want them to do without meaning it. You're lying. You're being manipulative. There have been a lot of times where I've said to somebody like, I, there, there have been a few times where I've been in situationships that I'm like, we need to date or I'm done. And if they're like, I don't want to date you, I don't want to commit to you, then I'm done. I'm going to leave then because I'm hurt where I am here. So leaving and that's fine. So everyone's got like their partner that they're vibing with the best. And so then they all go and they all have like a big dinner. <laughs> they sit at a big old table, all 10 of them, plus the host who's not gay. And in front of their current girlfriend, they have to stand up and pick someone else to marry for the next three weeks and give a whole thing about why they're picking that person. That sounds like the worst shit I've ever heard. I would actually rather unalive myself than have my partner do that in front of me. Also because the reasons why these people say they're picking the other person is just projecting all of the things that they, that their partner doesn't have or like the stuff that they wish their partner would have. So when I hear like Xander stand up and she's like, I choose Yoli. I think that Yoli is very sensitive and not selfish. And I'm like, <laughs> shots fired, Vanessa. Now this is a whole shit show. Of course it is. Less of a shit show than the straight one. I'm gonna say there's a lot more emotional maturity on this season by far. Oh, lesbians. They get to picking. There's some picking being taken place. So who gets partnered off? Tiff and Sam. Cool. Sounds good. Mildred and Ozzy. Alrighty. Cool. So they kind of swip swap. And then you've got the three that do the old switcheroonie. Mal is now with Lexi. Oh my god, I wish I was there. I wish. Can I join? Yoli is now with Xander. Mm. And Vanessa is now with Ray. During this sit down though, Vanessa was being fucked. <laughs> Vanessa kept interrupting Xander when Xander was talking. You're not supposed to interrupt the other people. This is a very like dramatic team. TV moment of like, it's like the, you know, the bachelor when they have all the roses and they're like, I give this rose to Brian. It's like serious. And Vanessa's like, who's Brian? You never told me about a Brian. Who's that tractor girl? Like, I don't know about this person. That's so funny that you're talking. Shut up, Vanessa. The other thing, Vanessa was like mouthing the words fuck off to Xander multiple times, which Mildred called her out on. Mildred's like, stop. We all see you and no one likes it. And Vanessa's like, what are you talking about? Mildred's like, no, quit it. We're all here at this table, not just you and Xander. Respect this process and all of us honestly at this at this point i was like mildred slaps mildred and i would be a great couple because mildred communicates she talks she speaks it out and i'm like oh frick i really like tiff and tiff is so funny and i feel like tiff and i could also get along so well but the two of them together they just fight I'm like, oh God, they shouldn't be together. But I think that with the right people, they could be wonderful. At this point, I was like, they're great individually. Anyway, these new couples go off. They do their thing. First night comes around. Vanessa, we know that she's horny. We know that she is here for some puss. And Vanessa was being way too pushy with Ray. I actually was very uncomfortable watching 
this scene with uh Vanessa and Ray like coming actually a lot of the scenes with Vanessa and Ray I was just uncomfortable because I'm like Ray is uncomfortable Ray is uncomfortable Vanessa stop it Ray was not cool with like I don't want to fuck you I love Lexi I'm here for Lexi Ray was like why are you saying the things that you're saying Vanessa Vanessa kept being very sexual with Ray touching her constantly like being so sexual for the whole night and then that night Vanessa fingered Ray and this was like a whole thing finger gate Ugh. So first of all, Ray was like very, she woke up immediately texted Lexi, like she was so upset. And when we hear Ray talking about it to Vanessa, the two things that she says are that she consented to it and that like it was fine because she, like it, she didn't feel pressure to do it at all and she consented to it. Anything that someone says, <laughs> anything that anyone says out loud is what they're thinking, right? And it broke my heart to hear those first things come out of Ray's mouth. <sighs> Because I'm like, I have felt like Ray so many times. And the fact that she first was like, it was consensual and I agreed to it and I didn't, you didn't pressure me. You didn't have to say those things because no one assumed otherwise. But you're saying those things for a reason. And I'm really fucking sorry that you have to say them and convince yourself. Because I fully, 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 fully do not think that Ray was planning on that at all. I don't think that Ray wanted that at all. I don't think that Ray wanted to do that in general at all. I think that Vanessa was incredibly pushy and forced her in some way or another force or coerce, coerced her uh, uh i was very uh, i was very uncomfortable with all of that and i felt really bad for ray is she an adult that could have said no absolutely but still if vanessa was a man right now i would be punching him in the head as someone who likes girls and boys i think that i also have an easier way of when i see a girl acting the same way a guy acts i see it the same way and i'm like that's not okay and a lot of people are like they don't see it like that when it's a girl because a lot of people don't think of girls being like predatory like that but they can be and they are and I don't think Vanessa had any respect for Ray. One thing that Vanessa really was like digging about Ray, she's like, I don't get you. That's what I really like about you. You're very intriguing. I don't get you. I don't know how to read you. And Ray's like, why do you need to get me? Why do you need to know how to read me? Mm, because she isn't a person because Vanessa is only a mirror to other people. Vanessa is intrigued by you because she doesn't know how to be the best for you yet. She doesn't know how to make you like her the most yet. She doesn't know what you want to hear and see and do and who you are. And want to know why she doesn't know that? Because Ray doesn't know who she is. Because Ray does not have one idea. Literally halfway through the thing, Ray's talking to Lexi. Ray's like, who am I? What do I like? I know nothing about myself. What did I say? Identity crisis. Yes. This makes sense as to why these two chose each other. Ray was going to choose someone overpowering and overbearing and who made her do things like Lexi. And Vanessa was going to choose, honestly, uh, Vanessa was going to go lots of different ways, but she ended up choosing the one person who <laughs> didn't hate her, first of all. I think that was kind of one of the main reasons why they ended up together. But also the one person that she could completely dominate and control and call the shots. Ray is shy and quiet and soft-spoken and seems nice, just like Xander. Vanessa needs to be in charge. That first night, to with the new couples another new couple we have is tiff and sam right tiff gets really really freaking defensive and angry like kind of seemingly out of nowhere when sam is like oh yeah like we'll see if your dog works while sleeping in the bed with us if it doesn't work we'll have to see and tiff is like you hate my dog you want to murder my dog and sam's like no i just don't know if i want like, how big's your dog? Do I want it sleeping, like, in my face? I don't know. Maybe not. And Tiff's like, you are the worst. You actually abuse animals. I'm calling PETA. And Sam's like, what are you even, Tiff, what are you saying right now? <laughs> and I think that for Tiff, it really just took a minute to be like, hmm, not everyone's fighting with me all the time. <laughs> Interesting. Because it only really, we only saw this happen once. And then for the rest of the time that we see Tiff and Sam, they don't seem like they're fighting. They seem like they're buds. They seem like they're good. It really just seems like Tiff expected people to communicate that way and so was just hardwired to be yelly and snap back and fire back and I'm really glad that it took a bit like that Tiff was like oh my god I'm sorry I realized this pattern of behavior that I have and I don't want to do that anymore and I really wish that Ozzy gave Mildred the same thing because then we go over to Ozzy and Mildred. So at this point, I'm loving Mildred. She communicates so well. I don't know, like her and Tiff fight and they are at each other's throats. But I think that a lot of what Mildred said up to this point, I was like, I completely fucking agree with you. And I could have a completely like normal, calm conversation with her. And how she spoke to Ozzy too. Like Ozzy came back from like a night out and she was like, hey, I would love to talk about some of the chores and stuff. I just feel like um, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with what's going on here. And Ozzy, guys, why is no one talking about Ozzy? Whoa, I'm getting fired up. I'm getting fired up only because I disagree so heavily. <sighs> any, any clip with Ozzy and Mildred, 
from this point on. I wanted to punch Ozzy in the head. I was so shocked. Not really shocked. Okay, this is how I felt. How I felt. In the scene with Ozzy and Mildred, and, and Mildred's like, I would like to, you know, talk and communicate about some of the trash or whatever, being completely calm, completely normal and fine. Ozzy was just out all night with his boys. He's like hanging out with my friends and stuff. And then Mildred's like, can we talk? And Ozzy's like, nope. Not at all, actually. You're overwhelming me. You're literally yelling at me. This is not okay for my mental health right now. I need to, I actually, I just want to go back and I just want to go back out and drink with my friends. I'm not dealing with this. And Mildred's like, we're in a marriage, Ozzy. We're talking. I'm trying to talk to you like a person. Are you going to run away? And Ozzy's like, I'm not running away while putting on his shoes and walking out the door. Mildred's like, what the fuck? And after like Ozzy ran away, Mildred's like, I'm not going to go get her. Like you can, the producers, y'all can go get her. Like I'm not going to. Mildred's like, I was just trying to talk and be a person. And Ozzy was being narcissistic. Ozzy, I was, I actually, it made my blood boil. And at this, at this moment, I was actually livid at the zero, 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 zero accountability or communication by Ozzy at all whatsoever. And I was like, that tangly feeling that I felt with you, Ozzy, that I thought was autism, I don't think it's autism. I think it's narcissism. And we're gonna have to keep waiting and see. And just you fucking wait. I cannot believe that no one has said this yet. Or maybe people have and I haven't seen it. But I cannot believe that no one is talking about how I think that Ozzy is a narcissist. And lots of people have speculated and said on the internet, Ozzy is very traumatized. Ozzy is not a narcissist. Ozzy is traumatized. Ozzy's 42. All narcissists are traumatized. That's what makes someone a narcissist. The most common cause of narcissism, NPD, is having a narcissistic parent. We will talk about Ozzy's parents and childhood in a bit, but I've seen lots of people like, oh, Ozzy, because Mildred later on does some like not good shit. And so people are like, Mildred sucks. Mildred's a narcissist. Nope, Mildred is talking like a normal person in that like Mildred was speaking like a person, like a person trying to have a conversation about the chores. And Ozzy's like, you are attacking me. And she's like, I, Sorry that you feel that way. I am just trying to talk to you. And Ozzy's like, this is, you are hurting my mental health. I need to take a break to breathe. I need to breathe. This is not okay. And then leaves. And the next day, Ozzy packs up the house and is like, I need to put my mental health first. This is not a good environment for me. Mildred is gaslighting me and hurting me and I need to leave. I can't believe this. And literally leaves the experiment. After one, one small little confrontation, I cannot be confronted. I cannot. I am, I am only perfect. I'm going to leave now. This was too much for me. Too much for me. Mildred's like, fuck me, I guess. That sucked. That was awful. I'm gonna keep talking about Mildred and Ozzy because I'm on, a, I'm on an Ozzy run right now. Later on. So now let's say everyone's done their three weeks. They're now back at that good old table again. They're, they're gonna go with their old regular partners again. So they're talking about their experience. And Mildred was like, okay, Ozzy, do you want to talk about it first or do you want me to go? And Ozzy's like, go ahead. Mildred's like, Ozzy left like a few days in because I tried to have a conversation. And as I tried to have that conversation about the garbage being taken out and stuff, Ozzy actually was like, this is too much for me. This is overwhelming. I want to go back out with my friends and you're nagging me and I just here to have a good time and I'm going to leave. And Ozzy is like, why are you saying these things that are not true, Mildred? Why are you lying to everybody right now and saying that I was not there for you and that I didn't talk to you and that I ran away? I did not do those things. Narcissist. I don't know why people are like, that's a traumatized, that's a traumatized individual. That is a liar, Mary. That is someone lying and gaslighting out loud right now. Like Mildred was not being shit. <laughs> Mildred it was telling the truth. And Mildred was like, really, Ozzy? You're telling me you're not running away because you actually were running away when I said that you were running away. You were. And Ozzy's like, you're lying. And want to know something that I thought, I thought this was so cool. I thought this line specifically really called Ozzy out because then Ozzy was explaining that whole situation with Mildred and how Mildred was just bombarding them and hurting their mental health and Ozzy was like because Ozzy's like I wasn't ready to talk yet I just wasn't I I wasn't in that safe space where I could talk yet she needed to give me she needed to give me a minute to put down my shield my armor your what your shield your armor Wow, that was a Freudian slip there, eh? Ozzy at first sees himself as shielding himself. With my shield, a shield. Let me take my shield down. As in like, I'm scared and I'm hiding. Let me take my shield down. Then, then, then Ozzy goes, my armor. Take my armor off. Because armor is not like a shield. And I was like, wow, that's telling that you said that, Ozzy. Narcissism. Okay, I'm not trying to, I'm not, I can't diagnose anybody, but I'm just talking about this, okay? I'm just talking and saying things out loud, you, but you don't have to trust me. You definitely do not. Do your own stuff. I'm pointing these things out because I cannot believe people are not talking about Ozzy. I cannot believe it. My shield, my armor. I've never, 
Ah! What a perfect metaphor for narcissism. Narcissists are constantly holding a shield out in front of them, but they think that they're wearing armor. <laughs> Skipping on now, we have a new lesbian love couple, as I we 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 should have. This is lesbians. And it's Yoli and Xander, which I'm like, mm. I feel like that was kind of a given for Yoli. I felt like whoever Yoli was gonna be with, she was going to fall in love with because of who she is as a person. Another reason why I would not go on the show is because I relate a lot to Yoli. I fall in love with everybody. I will be talking to someone for a few weeks. I know that I have attachment disorders and I'm working on them, but I know that I fall in love so fast and I know that whoever I'm giving my time and attention to, I think is like the most amazing person in the world. And I know that if I had a fake wife for three weeks, I'd fall in love with her too. Are you kidding me? You're literally supposed to. You're literally supposed to be married for three weeks. Like this is a ridiculous social experiment that fucks with you. This shouldn't happen to any human person. But yeah, now Yoli and Xander are like in love, but you know, they got some issues because they have their other partners that they gave ultimatums to that they have to return to. So there at their little table, Vanessa whips out a little, a little note she wrote. And her little note she wrote is to apologize to everybody. She's like, I'm sorry. I want to, I would just like to speak to the group. I'm sorry if you thought that I thought that marriage was stupid because I'm here to let you know that I've actually changed and I don't think that anymore. And also, I'm sorry if you thought I wasn't taking your, you seriously and your hopes and your dreams for marriage. Thank you. Vanessa, you're a shit writer. Because I heard her talking about being an influencer. And so I'm like, is she an influencer? Is she like a poet or something? Is that like her thing? Because she comes and writes like another thing later and says it out loud. Nope. I don't think so. I saw her Instagram, just like pictures and stuff, like a normal influencer person, which I'm like, thank the Lord, because both of the things she wrote were not good at all. <laughs> and were just so weird and disingenuous and autistic. I've done so many things like that. It's hard for me to know what I feel, how I feel. It's also hard to speak in front of a group of people about your feelings. I like to write down what I'm thinking and feeling first because that's one way that I know what I'm thinking and feeling. And judging by the words that Vanessa used, they were not, there was not a large vocabulary. It had me estimating, hmm, this girl was also just trying to write out her own feelings, which seemed to be with the emotional width of a teaspoon. People don't really accept Vanessa's apology, thank the Lord. Then they all go back to their normal couples. Oh wait, before we even go back to the normal couple, hold on, Vanessa, they, they meet each other's family and stuff and Vanessa introduces Ray to her dad. And I'm like, oh my God, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to meet Vanessa's dad. This is gonna tell us all. Vanessa's dad walks in, oh my God. That is an autistic man. I knew it from him walking and talking and looking. And then he said, the first words that he said was about how he did not understand the social cue and dynamics of the situation right then. He walked in, he's like, hi, and then hugs his daughter and stuff. And she's like, oh my God, dad, big papa, crazy jokes, blah, blah, blah. He's like, hi, and then goes to Ray and gives a handshake. And then Vanessa's like, a handshake, dad, you're so stupid. And he's like, well, I'm from, I'm from the East Coast and like we would hug, but I don't know if any, if everyone does that and if she would want to hug. Ah! Oh, oh God. Vanessa might be autistic. Not really what I wanted to hear or say, but also makes sense. Also just shocking that like I was like that a decade ago and she's like that a decade from now of me. How are people not growing up faster? Did she have such an amazing life that she did not have the trauma that I did that made me grow up as fast as I did that made her smarten up before the age of 30? Oh my God though, Vanessa's dad, the way he talks, he talks about marriage. He's, he's an IT guy guy. He's an IT guy. I date, a, I date a woman. If in two months I think that we, we see different futures, I break up with her. There's no point. Why would I waste any of my time? If I were to get married again, I would be 100% in. I would not be 99% in. I would be 100% in. Marriage is a huge deal. Oh man. Because I thought if Vanessa's dad, if Vanessa's parents, if Vanessa's family are normal, then I'm like, maybe she's just, maybe she's just, she says she's a Virgo. Maybe she's closer to the Leo end on that. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. But then that being Vanessa's dad, I'm like, Vanessa's neurodivergent. There's no way Vanessa's not neurodivergent with that dad. And given the, the correlations I'm making, I don't know. I just want to throw the word autism out there. Just throw it. Also, Xander's neurodivergent. No way not. There is a scene of Xander and Yoli, the scene where they first say, I love you. Xander like hugs Yoli because Yoli had like the tie-dye 
shirts and whatever and it was the weirdest awkwardest like there was a weird pause and then Xander spoke up again and that pause was an autistic pause does any other autistic people like y'all feel that when like something you're like you do a thing but you know that it wasn't proper or it was like weird socially and so then you have to like say words to like move on to the next topic because you just did a weird thing they just like hugged kind of randomly and then had to keep talking Xander neurodivergent Xander autistic Xander autistic Yoli senses it too Yoli's like you are a loving kind person that people take advantage of and I would like to protect you that's very Yoli makes sense sounds right fuck (laughs) lately i've been really vibing and digging the dynamics of autistic adults and their relationships and they go in a lot of different ways but vanessa and xander are both two perfect examples of the ways that an autistic person can fit in the dynamic of their relationship. One way is Xander, who is a good person, loving, caring, vulnerable, maybe doesn't have the best boundaries or regard of self and self-worth. And Xander can probably find themselves in very manipulative relationships where they are like kind of taking the back seat and they have someone that's much more controlling and dominant. That puts them in their routine for them. Let's not forget autistic people love routine and stability. And so you will see a lot of autistic people in long-term relationships that they should not be in just because it feels good. Vanessa's on the other end of this where she knows nothing about herself, but she is so social and pretty and fun that she's never had to because she is the manic pixie dream girl that people just fall for and do whatever for. She hasn't had to develop her own self and personality because she's never been with someone who has made her or asked her to. She's never been with someone who knew themselves enough to know what they want from their partner and know what kind of love that they are going to accept. I bet Vanessa's very disconnected too because she she's not even a person. She doesn't even know. She's also just here in this relationship with Xander for four years, even though she doesn't want to be in it anymore because it's easy and good and normal. Interesting. I don't care about any other couple. Sam and Ozzy. We're gonna talk about Sam and Ozzy. Sam was talking to Tiff lots about the growth that she's done over these few weeks with Tiff. She whipped out her notebook and she's like, look at all of this that I've written in my journal since we've been here. Any girl who is shy and quiet and writes a lot in her journal. Sorry, I'm yelling. Any girl who is shy and quiet but writes a lot in her journal does not want to be shy and quiet. She has things to say and she's not saying them. Why? And she's written that much in the relationship with Tiff? What? What? As a writer? As someone who always has a notebook filled with, with, write, with writing? She has shit to say out loud. Interesting, Sam, because I already don't like your partner, really. I already am getting bad vibes from your partner. Now I'm kind of seeing the vibe that you are, Sam. Because again, Sam starts talking about how she's found so much more of her voice. She never used to say her opinions or have thoughts before with Ozzy. And now she's like, I can speak up and say things. And when Sam and Ozzy get back together, Sam is speaking up and saying things. And it's not even bad. It's not, it's just like an opinion. It's not, it's not bad. She's just like, I really thought that that was nice. And Ozzy's like, that's fucking dumb that you even say that. Why are you asking me that right now? Why are you even saying that? You're dumb. That's bullshit. Literally being abusive and narcissistic and gaslighting her. And the person who's with them on their little date is like Ozzy's friend. And Ozzy's friend is like, Ozzy? Nope, you're shit right now. And Ozzy's like, she's attacking me. She's attacking me. I'm the victim. I'm not safe here. And the friend's like, nope, you're being fucked. And then Ozzy's like, ah storms out of the fucking restaurant and like leaves that's abusive that's abusive and manipulative then ozzy goes out and sits on the curb and cries and goes i'm just realizing i had awful parents and an awful childhood this is not the first time that ozzy is discovering this ozzy's 42 don't just have a fight with your girlfriend and five seconds later go i'm realizing now it's because of my childhood the words that ozzy uses indicates to me that they've been going to therapy, they've been trying to learn some things, and they use those words against other people. Ozzy's been known for a long time that their parents were narcissists, I believe. No one comes to that by themselves on a random Tuesday. (laughs) It takes a lot. And also, from all of the words that Ozzy has been using before, it seems like Ozzy knows a little bit about narcissistic abuse. But I was 
baffled baffled I'm like sam you need to run you need to leave because ozzy's like i don't think this is gonna work for me sam you now have opinions and speak up and it's actually bad for me i don't think we can work like this because we're actually attacking me this is not a good space for my mental health right now fuck you your ideas are bullshit I'm never talking to you again. I can't believe this. Let me take off my shield, my armor. Sam, please, you do not deserve to walk on eggshells on your tiptoes all the time. You deserve to be able to have one problem, one. I've dated a narcissist and it's so much like being in a relationship with Ozzy. You cannot bring up one thing. You cannot talk about one problem. You can never have any kind of problem with them whatsoever. They are so fragile and vulnerable that if they so much as see the cracks that you are starting to form in their self-identity, your public enemy number one, you're betraying them. How could you do this to me? You know how much I've been through and your needs will never matter. You don't have needs as far as they're concerned. You literally are not a person. You are something that they can feed off of and use. Not even trying to be like, narcissists suck and are bad. This is just what narcissism is. And it's awful. I wish that no one was a narcissist because to create a narcissistic human being is a lot of pain and trauma and awfulness that no one deserves, not one person. When I was looking for pronouns, cause I, I went on Ozzy's profile cause I'm like, I'm gonna look for Ozzy pronoun. No pronouns there. Ozzy's Instagram is a lot now about narcissistic abuse and surviving narcissistic abuse and finding out, pointing things out about narcissistic abuse. Sam and Ozzy got engaged at the end of this. They're not married, but they're still together. And they have joined Instagram accounts where they post a lot about therapy, a shit ton about therapy and the different therapists they're working with. They're actually starting like their own little organizations and they talk and they share their thoughts about narcissistic parenting, which I'm pointing out because I think that that's important. Also for <laughs> my thoughts and my findings, I think that that that's it right there. That's all you need to know. Ozzy probably had a narcissistic parent, if not two, probably just one because two narcissists don't really do well together. And you know what? I really hope that they're doing a lot of therapy for it. I really hope so. I'm really glad to hear that they're getting better because you can be aware of being a narcissist and actively try to do better and learn about the things that happened to you in your childhood and what that led to make you believe about people, about life, about your self-worth. And so I hope, and honestly, I figure that during this process, I mean, there's been so much talk about narc abuse over there that hopefully Ozzy's in a good place. And I really fucking hope that Sam's in a good place because Sam's a pretty dope person. And I really felt for her. She felt like me, like she couldn't say one word. She had to constantly cater to Ozzy's emotional needs. He was like very, like couldn't talk to Ozzy at all. And people are like, see, they're traumatized. Ozzy's traumatized. That's why traumatized. Yes, every bad person is traumatized. Every bad person who is an adult is traumatized. Uh, name one. That's not. Ted Bundy's the only one that's not that I can think of. And that's just because Ted Bundy said to everybody that he didn't have trauma as a child, but he probably did. Every bad adult is traumatized. We can't be like, they're traumatized. Yes, we all are, Mary. Smarten up. If you're traumatized and 40, now you're traumatizing others. Yeah, you're traumatized, but this is how it happens. This is, this is how it happens. Yes, generational trauma, cycles of abuse. Yes, yes, Ozzy is, has incredible trauma and is also a narcissist probably from that trauma. It was so clear as day to me. Am I wrong? I could be really wrong, but I, I, I mean, I'm pointing it out and saying it anyway. My opinions on the end, whatever, they don't really matter. Um, I think this whole show's dumb and no one should be together. Oh, Mildred also um, at the reunion uh, got charged with domestic violence for throwing a plate at Tiff. So that was fucked. And I was like, dang it, Mildred. They were both such like good communicators, but then just together, I just wish they had a mediator that was like, hey, breathe. You're on the same side. You're not fighting. Stop fighting. And Tiff was like very upset and walked off and actually was allowed and, and everyone just let it happen. And Tiff didn't get their own say at all. And that was really shitty because I think that Tiff is a pretty dope person. And Tiff has then like also been saying now more about their relationship and saying like, I was in a relationship with a narcissist and I'm going to say, I mean, I'm not a, am I a diagnostician? No, but I don't think Mildred's a narcissist at all. I don't think so. She could openly admit lots of stuff. She was ready to talk about lots of problems. She's like, I am bad for these reasons. Was she misguided in a lot of ways? Like, was she like, yeah, I interrupt because I'm Latina. 
I can't change that I'm a Latina. Yeah, that was misguided. Yes, you are a Latina and you grew up in a household where this was common and regular and proper, but when she said that, I'm like, I know what you're trying to say, but it doesn't work like that and both can exist. You can be a Latina who grew up in that kind of environment and learn to communicate that way and still learn to communicate differently with people now. I, do I think Yoli's a narcissist? No. I think that she loves a lot of people and that sucks, but I don't think that a lot of people were meant to be monogamous. I think that loving a lot of people is normal. Do I think Mildred's a narcissist? No. Do I think Vanessa's a narcissist? No. <laughs> also, don't listen to me. I'm just a person. I can't diagnose anybody. I'm just talking out of my ass. So you don't have to listen to me. That's totally fine. I'm just autistic and know a lot about autism and personality disorders and people. And that's why I'm talking. What did you guys think about Love is Blind queer edition? Did you like it? I had a great time. I thought the drama was juicy, juicy. It was, it makes more sense too that in the lesbian one, there were more people that I'm like, those are autistic people because the queer community has more autistic people and autistic people are more likely to be gay. It's like a thing. Okay. Anyway, I should probably scooch my gooch. That's all I really wanted to say. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video once again. Um, love you to death. Love you to death. If there's any shows or people that you're like, Paige, what the fuck? Is this an autistic person? Let me know. I, I want to see. I'll take, a, I'll take a stab at it. I'll diagnose the shit out of you, bro. Anyway, love you. Love you. Bye. Yo, yo, yo. Peace out. Peace out, Girl Scout. This is the end of the video song. This video is to tell you the video's done. If you're hearing this, it's because the video's done. Go watch another one. Boop, boop. Have a good day. Love you so much. Bye.